This tutorial will demonstrate the power of simulation for designing robots. Let's start off by building a basic robot. You give the robot a big square body, add a head, add some little arms like so, then connect everything with some springs. Because it's a robot, it also needs some wheels. Let's move over that wheel, add a center hinge, and then make a second wheel. Also give it a hinge. Then let's motorize the first wheel and run the robot simulation. Now, normally your robot will be happy just driving around. But oh no, what's this? A staircase is in the way. and your robot fails. Wheels are just no match. Okay, let's try again. Let's start with the staircase so there won't be any more surprises. Then we'll build a biped. We have the body, the head, some arms, the legs, and the feet. Like before, we connect it all up with springs, as so. And then we simulate it. Now, as you can see, bipeds are really hard to simulate and control. By attempting to climb the stairs, your biped has quickly become a failure in life. As a solution, you combine the advantages of a wheel with the advantages of legs to get Carpet Monkey. Carpet Monkey is a robot designed with special spring-loaded legs that are capable of bending and conforming to the terrain yet rotate like wheels. Here is an example in slow motion. So let's simulate a robot with these special claws. As you can see, the robot is useless. The body spins, but the claws are motionless. Okay, so it needs a tail as shown. Let's add a tail and simulate it again. But quickly you can see that it fails on small obstacles. Obviously, the tail is somehow important. But how long should it actually be? I am now going to use the power simulation to determine the optimal tail length. Let's make the tail as long as the claws and simulate the robot again. After scaling the grass obstacle, it fails with the small box object in the way. It embarrasses itself. Okay, let's try again and make the tail 1.5 times longer than the claws. Nope, it still can't get over that obstacle. The robot has failed again. Alright, let's make the tail twice the length of the claws. Scales a small object. And it, oh, 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 almost, almost. Nope, still a failure in life. I feel it's making progress, so let's increase the tail length at 2.5 times the claw length. Oh look at that, it's working. And zero problems with random pebbles in the way. Here's another object twice the size of the previous. Again scaled with no problems. Carpet Monkey probably thinks he's cool now. Let's see what Mr. Staircase has to say about that. As you can see, staircases aren't the problem. The claws quickly grip onto each step. Well, what if a cliff suddenly appeared? No problem. Carpet Monkey can handle it. And the physics of the system guarantees that the tail always stays in the back. So, 
Where does Carpet Monkey fail? As you see, it fails with really tall objects that have low friction and or rounded edges. So it might slip and founder a lot, but after several attempts, it could still scale the object and go on to use its spinning claws to take over the world.